All right, here we go. Last question for me today. This is the question number six from the 2014 AB International Exam. It says, consider the differential equation dy dx equals 1 minus 2 over x squared times y minus 1, where x is not equal to 0. Let y equal f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with initial condition f of 1 is equal to 2. Okay? In part A, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at the point 1 comma 2. Slope of the line tangent to the graph, we know what that is. That's the derivative. I need to know dy dx at 1 comma 2. So we're going to go to the derivative expression. We've got 1 minus 2 over x squared times y minus 1. Okay, what is this? 1 minus 1 squared is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2 times 1. We're going to get negative 1. That's all that we needed. That's part A. 1 point. There's no need to do anything more. You're not going to earn any points for this. All right, let's look at part B. In part B, it says on the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the nine points indicated. Well, let's do this. A slope field is just that. It is, we're looking at all the tangent lines. We're looking at slopes of the tangent lines at each of the nine points. We've already gotten a start on this. We found the value of the derivative. We found dy dx at 1 comma 2 to be negative 1. So at x equals 1 and y equals 2, I'm going to draw in a tangent line that has a negative slope. <coughs> We're not going to get all OCD on this. I'm not going to pull out a ruler and say, is this really a slope of negative 1? What I need to see is a line that is decreasing and approximately that slope. Now from here, you're just going to find the slope at all the other eight points. And I'm going to do these relatively quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time in the video here. dy dx at 1 comma 1. 1 minus 2 times 1 squared, that's negative 1. Times 1 minus 1, that's 0. Oh. The derivative at 1 comma 1 is 0. How do we draw that? I need a tangent line with a slope of 0. I need a horizontal tangent line. Now where did that 0 come from? It came from the fact that the y minus 1 was equal to 0. Are there any other places where that's going to happen? Well, what about if we find the derivative at 2 comma 1? You'd have 1 minus 2 over 2 squared times 1 minus 1. I don't need to know what 1 minus 2 over 2 squared is. I know that I'm multiplying with 0. We get 0. So the slope here is 0. Similarly, the slope at negative 1, 1 is going to be 0. I'm just going to do one more point. dy dx at the point 2 comma 2. 2 comma 2, 1 minus 2 over 2 squared times 2 minus 1. Well, let's see, 2 over 2 squared, that's 2 over 4, that's a half. 1 minus a half is a half, times 2 minus 1 is 1, you get a half. Because that is positive, I'm going to draw in a tangent line at 2 comma 2 with a positive slope, now, slope is a half. It's going to be a little bit flatter, and there we go. Rather than spending time on the video calculating the slopes at all the rest of the points, let me just finish this off. At negative 1, 0, you're going to have a positive slope. At 1, 0, you also have a positive slope. But at 2, 0, you're going to have a negative slope, and it's going to be probably something like negative a half. Uh, last point over here is this one at negative 1 comma 2 you're going to have a negative slope. All that you need to do for each of these is plug in the given points into the initial differential equation. If you get a positive answer you're going to have an increasing line. If you get a zero answer you're going to have a horizontal line. 
if your answer comes out to be negative, you're going to have a decreasing line. In terms of points, all the places that had a zero slope were scored together. So these three points right here, if you have slope of zero, one point, and then they looked at everything else. They looked at these three points up here, plus these three points down here. They grouped those together, and they gave you one point for a grand total of two points on part B. That's a pretty typical way for the College Board to award points on a slope field. I wouldn't spend a lot of time here, but I would make sure that this is something you are really comfortable with. These should be easy points to pick up. All right, let's look at the final part, part C. On part C, we're, set, we're told to find the particular solution to this differential equation with initial condition f of 1 equals 2. If we're looking for the particular solution to a differential equation, your final answer is going to be y equals something, and you'll have to know what the constant of integration is. If there are any domain restrictions in place, we should consider those as well. Um, the College Board, although they always include, if there's a domain restriction, they'll indicate it in their answer. I've never seen on a scoring rubric where they're going to take points off or withhold points for having the wrong domain restriction or even forgetting to include the domain restriction. So here we go. The y dx equals 1 minus 2 over x squared times y minus 1. Now, for my calculus students, this tends to be a very straightforward process. We practice this a lot in class. Um, this differential equation, differential equation, because we have a derivative and we have an equal sign. What I see on this side over here is that my differential equation involves x and y. This is usually a sign that what you're going to try to do is separate the variables. The, the technique is called separation of variables. What you're trying to do is get the differential equation in the form f of y dy equals g of x dx, meaning everything that involves a y, including the dy, is on one side. Everything that involves an x, including the dx, is on the other side. So let's look at this and let's look for some algebra that we can do. Usually my students will say multiply everything by dx. If you multiply the entire equation by dx, on the left, the dx's cancel out, leaving just dy. On the right, this is all multiplication. So I have 1 minus 2 over x squared times y minus 1 times dx. That's all multiplication. Now I still have part of the expression on the right involving a y. I need to move that to the other side. I can do that through division. And I get dy over y minus 1 equals 1 minus 2 over x squared dx. I can see now that all the terms that have a y and the dy are on one side. All the terms that involve an x and the dx are on the other. I have separated the variables and I've just earned the first point. Now your next move with separation of variables is that we're going to integrate both sides. And I need to actually see the integral sign. So let's see. Usually there's one side of the integration that's a little bit easier than the other. And I want to start there. So dy over y minus 1. Let me, let me look at that a little bit differently. How about 1 over y minus 1 times dy? Depending on your integration skills, you might know right away that this integrates as the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 plus some constant of integration. You can double check that by finding the derivative. The derivative of the natural log of stuff is going to be 1 over y minus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. Perfect. To integrate 1 minus 2 over x squared dx, it might be worth rewriting this as 1 minus 2x to the negative 2. The integral of 1, that's not too bad. That's just going to be x. Now I've got minus 2 times the integral of x to the negative 2. 
Well, that's x to a power. And the power rule says that if I'm integrating x to a power, you add one to the power and you divide by the new power. So in this case, the integral of x to the negative 2 is x to the negative 1, and then you divide by negative 1 plus Charlie. If I simplify, this is 2 plus x to the negative 1 plus c, or even better, x plus 2 over x plus c. The uh, college board, uh, never mind, let's not worry about the scoring rubric yet. Okay, we now are at the point where we have natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals x plus 2 over x plus c. Oh, my bad. Now, depending on your comfort level with separation of variables, you probably don't even write the C anymore over here. What you should be doing is these are different constants of integration. So I call them C sub 1 and C sub 2. They're constants. We don't know what they are right now. And so the reason that normally we don't write the constant on both sides is that your first move is going to be to subtract C1 to the other side. And this C2 minus C1, C2 is a constant, C1 is a constant. We don't know what these constants are right now. And in, in this process of separation of variables, I just like to call this super Charlie. It's just another constant. So the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 equals x plus 2 over x plus some constant. To solve this equation, you need to solve for y, and you need to determine the constant of integration. This is where the initial condition comes in. The initial condition, we were told that f of 1 equals 2. What that means is that if x equals 1, then y is equal to 2. If I plug all that information in, I've got the natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 over 1 plus c. 2 minus 1 is 1. I don't need the absolute value bars anymore because 1 is known to be positive. It is equal to 1 plus 2 plus c. The natural log of 1 is 0. Solving for c, we get c equals negative 3. We now know that the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals x plus 2 over x minus c. To solve for y, we're going to exponentiate both sides. And we do that because e and the ln are inverses. And now we have that the absolute value of y minus 1 is equal to e to the x plus 2 over x minus 3. To remove the absolute value bars, that means that y minus 1 is equal to either the positive or the negative version of x of e to the x plus 2 over x minus 3. My initial condition says that f of 1 has to be equal to 2, a positive 2. So if x equals 1, I need the positive answer only. So we know that we're going to have the equation y minus 1 equals e to the x plus 2 over x minus 3. Adding 1 to both sides, you have e to the x plus 2 over x minus 3 plus 1. This right here would be considered an all the way correct answer. All the points have been earned. Now if we want to go a little bit further, and we really should, we want to talk about the domain. Well, what's the domain here? First of all, I want to look at this expression here and see are there any domain restrictions? Are there any x values that we cannot use? Well, what are we doing? We have x plus 2 divided by x. Well, one of the things I know is that we cannot divide by 0, so x cannot be equal to 0. Because I'm looking for a solution, which is a continuous function on a specified domain, 
if I can't use x equals 0, what that means is my x values are either going to be negative or they're going to be positive. Because I can't use 0, that means I can't use both of these. Which one do I use? Do I use the domain of x less than 0 or do I use a domain of x greater than 0? Go back to your initial condition. You know that your initial condition was x equals, if x equals 1, y is equal to 2. You have to select the domain that contains your initial condition. So you're going to go with x is positive only. This is your domain. And like I said, for both calculus teachers and calculus students, the College Board does not normally worry about the domain, meaning they don't award points or withhold points for separable differential equations. Now, how are points awarded? Let's go back to the very beginning. One point for the separation of variables. One point for correctly integrating the expression on the left. One point for correctly integrating the expression on the right. For this problem, remembering to include the constant of integration on the right or on the left or on both earned you another point. Using the initial condition to solve for C earned the fifth point. Sorry about that. So using the initial condition to solve for C gave you the fifth point. And then finally solving the equation for Y earned you the sixth point. Whether you included the domain or not, it didn't change anything. Grand total of six points. Not too bad for question number six on the AP exam. And that's it for today.